Hello guys, it's Ellen here and it's Floral Friday and we're painting irises. Uh, I go over this step by step. I show the reference photo that I got this uh, iris from um, and I go over how I paint this and how I use this composition. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and also please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the uh, reference photo but you guys can just watch me with the reference photo. It's going to be on the side so you can see what I'm doing. Um, if you're not a Patreon member, you can go check it out here. Boop. Um, I have ad free videos, traceables, reference photos, and exclusive tutorials on Thursdays. And soon I'll be adding in uh, monthly live streams. So that's coming soon. Um, okay, guys. And it's just a place people can go support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So let's get painting some pretty irises. All right, guys, so I'll go over my supplies. I have a piece of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. This is the uh, 9 by 12 pad right here. Um, I have my palette, my paints in here. I go over them as I use them. I'll probably be using my Princeton uh, 12 Neptune series brush. I paint towels here. My reference photo, I was actually walking the dog last night and I saw this iris and I'm like, oh, I got to take a picture of this. And so that's a reference photo on the side here. And um, if you're a Patreon member, I'll put the reference photo uh, as an attachment for you. If not, you can just see me paint the iris um, as I'm going here. So uh, yeah, I mean, you, when you get a, when you see, here we go talk about composition here again. Um, this is a composition kind of loose iris tutorial. So you can just paint it in the middle, which is fine, a little iris. You could paint on the side. I'm gonna paint, interpret this one very large, okay? So it's like, it's this, I actually kind of sketched it already. This is, the, it looks like a tongue, right? I put it right here, this big. And then it has those little, kind of like, I don't know, looks like a little crown, or like a little devil head, <laughs> kind of here. And then we've got this side petal, right? kind of very delicate. And then we have the one up here in the middle and here. So they're like these three petals, one, two, three. And I have these two like flappy wings kind of down here. And what's like deep purple in here with some little yellow lines and purple lines and little yellow lines in this half one here. There's a little bud right here, if you can see that. I have a little bud going here and the stem and the stem here and then just put the green so it's really just a big flower kind of off to the right boom like that and then what i do is i'll imagine putting one kind of below here just really loose you know you want to have fun you don't have to be perfect like the picture you're just taking it for reference for the color for the shape and all that good stuff right so even though I have it sketched in, I'm probably just gonna I'm gonna erase most of this. And it's really just about painting. So you know when we talk about composition all the time, it's just how you want to interpret the design. You could have had it up here on the on the um, top right hand corner, or just over here on the bottom left. You could still do a couple of the center ones, which is fine. But for interest and in, um, design you want to keep it different and unique so i'm going to be playing with all these colors that are purple and yellow here and this is a deep purple and this more of like a pinky kind of purple up here and some yellows so i could start with just painting the yellow and then going into the purple and bleeding wet on wet i'm just going to try a little fun here so I'm going to mix up my, I already have like a purple here that I mixed uh, Quinacridone Magenta and Ultramarine Blue. They make great purples. Here's the magenta again. And the blue. More of a, you know, a, more of a fuchsia type purple. You can add a little more. I can, add, take, I can take some peacock blue in here and change that purple color even more so. Like I said, you don't have to match everything. This is a nice big brush. It's got a huge belly on it. So I'm gonna clean up this. And I'm gonna play around with just putting some water in that section. Oh, see it's got some pink on there already, but that's okay. I don't mind it. <laughs> it's very wet in this section. It's kind of like a little half circle, but like a little wiggle to it. 
just like that. And then I can go in and just bleed in some purple color, more of a bluish purple. So I'll add some more peacock with my magenta. Playing around with the purple. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly like that. It's gonna bleed in. That's a little too purpley. <laughs> purpley, bluish purple. It will dry lighter, so you can see this kind of like streaks coming this way. So you could take the tip and just kind of pushing that in that fashion. And if it's too much, it's too wet, you don't like it so much, you can just tap it on a paper towel and just lift up some of that paint. Kind of push it around with your brush. It's kind of like the first initial wash. You can always go back in and add some other tones to it. See, you get that little, it's got that hint of pink right here. You, do, you can just take your imagination and kind of put some color in here. You don't have to follow exactly how the iris really looks. I just want the feeling of it. So I just kind of tapped in some other colors. You could even take this purple I have up here, kind of push that in a little bit. It's just for reference. It's not supposed to be perfect. As it gets, as this paint starts to dry, you can go in and start to add in some of those pretty lines. I can go in like this. When it's really damp, it's just gonna bleed and spill out like this. So you wanna wait till it's a little bit damp, not wet. At this point I can go in and play around with um, the other leaves, really loose. And this, just kind of wiggling that paint into that fashion of that little leaf there. See, I still have this color on my brush. I didn't really clean it all the way, but it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna have a little darker purple on here than what I have in my brush. It's kind of puddling right there. I'm gonna remove some of that paint. And again, go back in I mix up some more paint. So you play around with the blues. I would I would use like bright blues like ultramarine and peacock because they would make pretty purples. If you're using uh, Prussian blue, it's going to be kind of duller. The bright ones make the pretty purples. I have this Verdier blue, which makes beautiful purples, pale purples. Adding a little more pink. So I can kind of bleed. You can do another technique where you kind of just take this. I'm taking up the excess paint on the paper towel. And just kind of touch the edges. And you're going to bleed on the edges. Just play around with that. You can see there's a line that goes down the middle. Feel a little more bluer. kind of doing this weird thing where it doesn't want to play around, doesn't want to go inside in the middle. So I can clean up my brush and I can manipulate it with my brush. Just kind of push it all around. See? Push that paint around. Go and add some more color in here. Just like that. Like I said, you can add some deeper tones. You don't have to keep it the way it is. You can kind of play around. Adding in some darker tone colors. Even though it's not on that, you don't have to follow everything verbatim. Makes it more interesting, don't you think? I can put that line right in the middle. And then we have this other one. Now that's a fold on this leaf and uh, this petal and it's pretty pale pink purple so I'll probably paint that one in first and then go grab some of this darker color on this edge right here and then I'll go back in and paint the other one 
Now down below here is like that big deep purple and the yellow. So when you're painting a really pale color like yellow next to a really dark color, you gotta be careful. So this way I'm gonna make sure my brush is really clean. I'm going to mostly paint that purple first and then I'll go back in and figure out where I want to want the yellow. I know I have it right here. Get that this purple is gonna be really deep dark purple. So I'm using ultramarine and magenta. If I grab a little of the Prussian blue, we'll see how much darker it's gonna get. Yeah, I get in that deep purple. So I'm doing wet on dry, different technique. See, wet on dry. Oh, we need to make a little bit more magenta in here. Really deep. And you can take the tip and you make all those little lines. Just like that. You'll have more control if it's wet on dry than you would have wet on wet. It's not going to look exact, but I'm going to get the feel of those lines you see here. And there's a few on the side. Just using the tip. Get the idea. Did notice that down here on the side it was a little more pink. I can kind of lift up some of this paint and add some magenta. Kind of in there. And that's a deep purple. Might even throw in a little deep black blue tones. So I got this Prussian blue magenta. Get it pretty dark. It's kind of looking like a goofy purple, and I want it more of a deep. serious purple. And then you can see over here on the, the flip, again wet on dry, it has it on the side here. Not that one. While well, you have that color going. And a little bit here. Okay, and then I'm going to just go back to the leaf up here. Pretty pale one up here. down by the little dragon head thing. So you're just gonna put that color in, wash that in. So now that I painted this and this is dry, it's only gonna bleed under here. I can go and add some of that. Deeper color into here. You can, while it's damp, just put the line up here. The lines are going like this. A little more blue. It's not falling exactly like that, and that's fine with me. I don't really care. I want it to be more expressive. And put some lines going like this. Okay, it's going to start to get tricky around this little devil thing here. And I'm going to put some of the purple that you see under here, because this one's folded over. 
I'll just put that darker color down in here. This part is a mixture of yellows with some of the purple lines. And the purple in here. You can put a little of the purple budding through right there. Grab some concentrated magenta, some peacock blue. It's getting very more expressive. So I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to grab a different brush, a little more control. My Princeton 8 long round. Uh, got the Cadmium Yellow Deep right here. It's pretty intense. I'll add a little magenta, but orange. You can see there's a little bit of yellow orange going on in here. So I'll have the two next to me. So you see a lot of this yellow going in and out here. It's going to be tricky if you want to do the yellow-purple combination. So put the yellow here on this little dragon head part. And some yellow peeking back here. And then we've got that yellow-orange center part right here. And it's kind of spilling down in here. Right? And then we have yellow, faint yellow over here on the edge of this one here. And here. And what we'll do is paint the purple on top of that. We have some yellow peeking in over here on the side too. Just a little bit. And then you can see there's a little bit of yellow under here. And it's purple too in the middle. So I'll remove that. And we have our pretty purple. Kind of just all in here. Just loosely painted in here. See, I'm just doing that pretty loose. It's not going to look exactly like what you see in the picture, but you get the idea, right? I have the purple. Kind of bleeding in here. And downward a little bit. So mine's a little bit darker than that. I can just lift it up like this. My brush. You're just getting a feel of it. You don't have to look at it perfect. See, you have this dark purple here on the left side, and then it goes in. This yellow might be still too damp. Those little lines. It's kind of pushing in those little lines there. And there's a bunch of little lines. See, it's kind of bleeding right now, so it's still too, too wet. You play around with adding the lines in. So we're just having fun, just kind of putting in medium different tones. So hit down into this this petal here. There's some purple shadows, some lines, and we're doing wood on dry. And while that's all dry now, you could go back in with your color and then make the little. Okay. A little lines. Now that's a little too dark. If it looks a little too stiff, you could just clean off your brush, just take some water itself, kind of damp the whole petal here. Not a lot of water, just a little bit. Go back in and grab some your paint that has minimal water, more concentrated color. And then kind of just push those lines and it will kind of bleed a little bit. It won't bleed a lot, but it'll bleed enough that you can recognize that it's lines. And have the delicate look to it. Just adding some darker tones under here. 
in here too. You can do the same thing with the other ones, you know. You go back in and make a tint. Or if you don't want to do that, you just take the paint while it's wet, put it on the dry. Either way. Let's see, put that one in there. And then you can go in and play around with adding a little more orange on here. So it has a look of it. It's not perfect. You can kind of see it's similar, but it's not perfect. And that's the whole point. It doesn't have to look perfect. Now I'm gonna get now that you've seen all that, I can just get really down and dirty loose. <laughs> Having fun with this one that's down here. Let's just go crazy, right? So I'm just gonna put some color in here. Similar, but I'm gonna make it really loose and Fancy free, different from the other one. Maybe a little more um, ragged edge. You see some of the irises that don't have the the perfect little rounded edge. They have those jagged kind of funky edges. But they all have the similar kind of petals like flopping on the side, doing that kind of thing. Add some blue so I can make one of those little side petals and then the top ones. I'm going to add more of peacock blue just to change it up. And it's going right off the page. I mean, like I said, the composition doesn't have to be this perfect centered scenario. You can get a little creative. And, and you can take some concentrated color, just go right in here and add that and bleed that. It doesn't have to be this perfect. Look at that. See? You change it up. It looks totally different from that one, but I like the way it looks. Right? This one's a little less serious. So I think I want to go back in and kind of darken up some areas that aren't supposed to be so serious. All right, so we haven't had any greens yet, so I'm just gonna take basically my cabin yellow deep, mix in some peacock blue and some burnt umber and make these pretty greens. Um, they could be dark. So I've got Prussian blue here. You can have darker green. Then you get a lighter green here. Using more yellow with peacock blue. So a combination. So you can go in in here and just put this bright one in. You can see this medium kind of green in the picture. It's really wet. I'm going pretty fast. And that's for a reason. Here's some leaves. Really quick. So if this paper has a tooth to it, and you just go like this when the paper doesn't with where the paint doesn't hit it, it's that dry brush technique. And I like that, the combination of the two. So then you can take the darker green, kind of bleed some of that in. Some Prussian blue. Add that right up in there. Got a little black. See how I'm changing this up? Um, I feel like this brush is kind of too small for really loose green, so I'm going to grab my Neptune 12 back here again. Make up some more greens. And I can get some prettier greens. Just really loose. So again, it's kind of all concentrated down this way. And I don't want to have too many greens. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to add some yellow to this one. So basically it's just this whole section. I might add some more greens behind him. I feel like missing a color or something. I'm going to stand up as you heard me do in my chair so I can tell. If I like it or I don't like it, I need to add something. 
So I'm adding some darker greens. It's just my personal preference. Like I feel like this one's floating and it's not grounded. I mean, that can be fine too, but it needs a friend, maybe. <laughs> He's supposed to be connected, which I didn't do to this guy. So maybe I'll just connect another one. Like so. So now I feel like there's more greens, it makes more sense to me. Decided to put some green out that way. Add some brown, some yellow. It helps to stand up. See, I'm seeing I want more greens. I wasn't going to do a lot of greens, but then I decided I do. I do want them. Maybe have something come up in here, too. And that's how you kind of do. You kind of just step back and look at your stuff and say, hmm. Is it doing what I want it to do? So there, I think that's working good. So just about done. I'm gonna go and add some yellow to this one. I'm gonna add some pretty yellow. And this one, pretty loose. Go back and add some yellow on this one. I don't wanna to get too bogged down with details on this one. I feel like maybe it got a little too skinny over here. So I can go back in here and add purples again. So that's pretty much it. And you can go back in and tweak adding your, your lines, like I said. Adding a little more color. And same goes for the uh, the greens here. I might add a little more brown. Can add some blues. Don't be shy adding color. You know, some darker green here. Just by adding blue, I just took that peacock blue and just put it right in there. So there we have Miss Iris. So I hope you guys like this little tutorial. If you have any questions, please in the comment section. Also, if you're a Patreon member, don't forget you can download the um, reference photo. So this is what I'm talking about composition, guys. It doesn't have to be a straightforward design. You just go off to the side, do what you feel like, have some fun with it. Okay, take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Have a great weekend.